Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So are you ready for today's story? Yes, I am. Which story are you going to tell me today? Inshallah, I'll tell you the story of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The story of Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. and Hazrat Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha she is a vital character in the religion and considered a role model for all muslim women she was noble kind generous and always truthful she was known by other names such as butul insia azra masuma and many others she was a wife of Hazrat Imam Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu To her words and actions she showed the world how to live as a true muslim Bibi Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha was born on Friday The holy prophet named her Fatima Both the parents were very happy when she was born Bibi Fatima was looked after with great care by the prophet and his wife Islam was spreading in those days and many people now follow the teachings of the prophet the enemies too grew by the day the life had become very difficult for the prophet and his family it had become a routine for the enemies for islam to throw garbage at the prophet whenever he passed by their house one day on top of throwing a garbage at the prophet they placed thorn in his path and the prophet's legs were bleeding when fatima saw her father's bleeding leg she was sad she washed the wound with water and cleaned his clothes prophet had to face several hardships while preaching islam in makka the enemies mostly comprised of the quraish clan belonged to the upper class they were scared that people would not respect them if they started following islam they arranged men to throw stones at the prophet but the prophet continued to call people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala patient when all the efforts of the quraish failed they decided to impose a ban on muslims in makka Abu Lahab the uncle of the prophet was also the leader of Quraysh in Makkah. He was a very evil man and the worst enemy of Muslims. He ordered a complete ban on prophet's family and their followers. No one in Makkah was allowed to buy or sell anything to them. They were not even allowed to talk to them. It was very difficult in those days for someone to live without the support of their tribe. For 3 long years the prophet labored quietly to deliver the message of God. Idol worship was deeply rooted among the people and the prophet tried to convince as much as he could. After 3 years of struggle he was only able to secure 30 followers. Even his companions had now started questioning his sanity. By now his enemies had started plotting against the prophet. The prophet preached that everyone were equal in front of God and this challenged the authority of local priests. One day they gathered together and decided to suppress the movement of prophet. They decided that each family should take upon themselves the task of stamping out the followers of islam they banned the muslims from entering the city of makka
the Prophet and his followers were forced to leave the city of Makkah. They set up a camp just outside Makkah. They made tents and lived in it for three long years. They were not allowed to enter the city to buy anything, neither could they sell anything as well. Bibi Fatima witnessed the people living in extreme poverty. Hazrat Khadija Ta'ala Anha spent most of her wealth in buying necessary goods to help the Muslims. But she had to pay a high price for the goods as no one was willing to sell anything to them. Their only support was the Prophet's uncle, Hazrat Abu Talib, the father of Hazrat Imam Ali. He refused to give up on his nephew. In spite of all this, Prophet continued his preaching. As days went by, more and more people were joining Islam. When the Quraysh realized that banning the Muslims was not going to be of any help at all, so they lifted the ban and Muslims were allowed to return to Makkah. By now, Khadija was not doing very well. Living in the desert for three long years had taken a toll on her health. She was sick by the time they returned to Makkah. Fatima loved her mother very much and she took great care of her. Little Fatima was only seven years old when her mother fell sick. She knew that her father loved her mother very much. His uncle Abu Talib, who was always kind to him, had passed away just a month ago and now his wife was sick. Khadija Ta'ala Anha knew that she was going to die soon. She kept thinking about Fatima. She wept for her thinking about her lonely life after she dies. Khadija Ta'ala Anha passed away on the 10th day of Ramadan. Fatima had lost her mother at such a young age. The Prophet had lost two most important people in the last few months. He declared that year as the year of sorrow. By now, Khadija was not doing very well. Living in the desert for three long years had taken a toll on her health. She was sick by the time they returned to Makkah. Fatima loved her mother very much and she took great care of her. Little Fatima was only seven years old when her mother fell sick. She knew that her father loved her mother very much. His uncle Abu Talib, who was always kind to him, had passed away just a month ago and now his wife was sick. Khadija Ta'ala Anha knew that she was going to die soon. She kept thinking about Fatima. She wept for her thinking about her lonely life after she dies. Khadija Ta'ala Anha passed away on the 10th day of Ramadan. Fatima had lost her mother at such a young age. The Prophet had lost two most important people in the last few months. He declared that year as the year of sorrow. The Prophet continued calling people to Islam and the Quraysh were fed up. One night, they came up with a plan to kill the Prophet. They sent their men to kill the Prophet during the night. When the man reached, they saw that the Prophet was not alone inside the house. They knew that the Prophet would come out of his house early in the morning. They decided to wait till next morning to kill the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad realized the situation and decided to get out of Makkah that night. He asked Ali if he could sleep in his bed to confuse the attackers. If I sleep in the bed, will it save your life? Asked Ali. The Prophet replied yes and his nephew 
readily agreed. He slept in the bed in the place of the Prophet and covered himself with a green blanket. The attackers could see someone sleeping covered in green blanket and they thought it must be the Prophet. They decided to wait till dawn to make their move. In the meantime, Prophet left his house and rode towards Medina. This was known as the first Hijra and marks the start of the Islamic calendar. When the enemies came into the house the next morning, they were shocked to find Imam Ali in the bed instead of Prophet. After a few days, Imam Ali took Bibi Fatima and others and travelled to Medina. The Prophet who had already reached Medina was waiting for them outside the city. He was so happy to see his close ones again. When Bibi Fatima reached the age of nine, many men came forward asking for her hand in marriage. Some of the men were rich and wealthy, some were from noble families, but the Prophet refused and kept waiting for the right man. One day, Imam Ali came to the Prophet and asked if he would let him marry Fatima. The Prophet was happy at his proposal as he knew Hazrat Ali was a good man. He was a good Muslim and the Prophet knew him since he was a child. Once Ali left, he asked his daughter if she was willing to marry Hazrat Ali. She bowed her head in modesty, but she was happy. The Prophet stood up and said, Allahu Akbar. He called Imam Ali and conveyed him the good news. On Friday, the first day of Zil Hijjah, in two Hijra, the wedding of Bibi Fatima and Imam Ali was celebrated. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam placed the hand of Fatima in Ali's hand and said, "May Allah bless his messenger's daughter, Ali. This is Fatima. You are responsible for her. What an excellent wife Fatima is. What an excellent husband Ali is. O oh Allah, bless them and their children." Bibi Fatima now began her role as the wife of Ali. They led a simple life and they loved and respected each other. Hazrat Ali would go out to do his work and Fatima did the course inside the house. Ali would also gather firewood and buy goods for his house. They were happy to share their food and belongings with the poor and needy. No one ever returned empty-handed from their door. Allah blessed them with four children. They were Imam Hassan, Shaban, Imam Hussain, Hazrat Zainab and their youngest one Umm Kulsun. Prophet appointed a maid Bibi Fizza to help Fatima with their household core. But the Prophet gave them strict instructions. Bibi Fizza was allowed to work on alternate days. Fatima used to do all the work when Bibi Fizza was on leave. Prophet was very fond of his grandchildren and named each of them himself. He would often visit the house of Fatima and played with the kids. One day, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to her house, said salams to her. Fatima returned his greetings. Prophet asked her to cover him with the Yemeni blanket as he was feeling weak. Fatima did like he asked her and covered him with the blanket. She noticed that her father's face was shining like a moon. Sometime later, her son Hassan came and salamed. He could smell the fragrance of his grandfather and ask his mother if he was here. 
Fatima returned his salams and told him that his grandfather was inside the blanket. Al Hasan moved toward the cloak and said, Peace be upon you, O grandfather. Will you allow me to be with you under this cloak? Prophet replied, Peace be upon you too, my son, and director of my pond. I allow you. Al Hasan then went under the cloak with his grandfather. Shortly afterward, his son Al Hussein came. Peace be upon you, mother, he greeted. Peace be upon you too, she replied. O oh, mother, he said, I can smell a pleasing scent of my grandfather. Yes, it is, I answered. Your grandfather and your brother are now under the cloak. Al Hussein moved towards the cloak and said, Peace be upon you, O grandfather. Will you allow me to be with you under this cloak? Prophet replied, Peace be upon you too, my son. I allow you. Al Hussein then went under the cloak with his grandfather at the same time. Hazrat Ali came in. Peace be upon you, he greeted Fatima. Peace be upon you too, she replied. He then said, Fatima, I can smell a pleasing scent, as if it is the scent of my brother and cousin, the messenger of Allah. Yes, she answered, he is there with your two sons under the cloak. Ali moved towards the cloak and said, Peace be upon you, o Allah's messenger. Will you allow me to be with you under the cloak? Prophet replied, Peace be upon you too, I allow you. Ali thus went with them under the cloak. Fatima then said, Peace be upon you, father. Will you allow me to be with you under the cloak? Peace be upon you too, my daughter, and part of my flesh. I allow you. This way, Fatima too went with them under the clock. When all of them were together underneath the clock, the Prophet held the two ends of the clock and raised his right hand towards the heaven and prayed, O oh Allah, these are the people of my household, the Ahlul Bayt. They are of my flesh and blood. Whoever makes them unhappy makes me unhappy. They are from me and I am from them. Send your blessings and mercy on me and them. Repel all blemishes from them and keep them pure as pure. Allah then spoke to his angels and said, He had created the whole of the universe for the love of the five who were under the clock. Angel Jibrail asked who was under the clock. Allah replied that they are the household of the messenger. Jibrail was then sent to the house of Fatima. After getting the permission of the Prophet, he entered the clock. Angel then told them what Allah had said and recited the ayat tahsir sent by Allah in praise of the Ahl al -Bayt. Hadith Akisa brings many benefits. One's sins will be forgiven and his hurdles will be resolved. The Hadith Akissa shows that Bibi Fatima is the link between the Prophet and the Imams. She is the center of purity and the Panjatana Park. One must recite this Hadith at least once a week. One day a rich Jew came to the Prophet's house for inviting Fatima to his daughter's wedding. The Prophet told them that he will ask his daughter and inform them. He told Fatima about the inf invitation and she said she will seek the permission of her husband. Hazrat Ali anhu gave his approval and Fatima anha was ready to go to the wedding. But the Jews didn't have a good intention in their mind. They wanted to make fun of the poor state of Fatima when she arrived for the wedding. It was the day of the wedding. Fatima anha arrived wearing a bright dazzling cloth. It was sent to her by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people looked at her, some of them felt unconscious. Even the bride fainted and there was no sign of her waking up. The mother of the bride begged Fatima for her help. Fatima anha prayed two rakat namaz and prayed to Allah to restore the bride to life. 
As she finished her dua, the bride opened her eyes and looked at Fatima. She stood up and shouted to everyone, "It is only because of her dua that I got my life back." She then recited, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah," and she declared her faith in Islam. When the other guests witnessed this miracle, they too announced their acceptance of Islam. Bibi Fatima led a simple life eating simple food and wearing plainest clothes. Hazrat Ali noted that she had blisters on her arms after working on the grindstone for hours. Yet she never complained. She never asked or demanded for anything. One day Bibi Fatima was ill and she was lying on bed. Ali went to her and asked her if he could get a fruit for her but she kept quiet and didn't answer at first when he repeated the question again she said that it would be nice to have a pomegranate ali was happy to hear this finally his wife had asked him for something he went to the market and asked a shopkeeper for pomegranates but the seller said that pomegranates were not of that season and he didn't have any stock ali went to another shop but there too he was disappointed one by one he kept visiting different shops searching for the fruit and finally he got one and he returned home to give the fruit to his wife as he walked home he heard a groan imam ali went to see who was making that sound he found a poor beggar lying down from the looks of it he could see that he was down with fever are you okay he asked the beggar can i help you the beggar said i have been sick for many days my mouth is so dry i wish someone could give me a pomegranate ali was bewildered he always loved helping others and he could easily give the pomegranate in his hand to help the beggar but his wife asked something of him for the first time what do i do he thought finally he broke the fruit in half and gave one half to the beggar he then walked home but after some time he met another beggar on the road this time he had to give the other half of the fruit to the beggar hasrat ali was sad and walked back home when he reached home he was surprised his wife was sitting outside the house with a basket full of pomegranates in front of her she said there was a knock on the door just now i came out and saw this whole basket full of pomegranates Thank you for sending these. As soon as he heard this, he realized that those fruits were from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Masha Allah, that was such a great story. I'm glad you liked it, my son. Are there any more stories of Bibi Fatima Razi Allahu Taala and her uncle? Yes, my son. There are many other interesting stories. I'll tell you those later. It is time for me to leave. Goodbye. Goodbye.